I think of drawing, I think of quality of line, like the drawings of Angra, the drawings of David. The subjects of those drawings are long gone. You know, whoever they drew is, is dead. It's not the who they drew, it's, it's how they drew it that matters. Is that why you are doing basically only imaginary portraits? Because in yeah. fact, the subject doesn't matter. It's always going to be a condo portrait. Exactly. <laughs> the subject doesn't matter. It's just how you're able to transmit or transcribe the image in your mind that makes all the difference. You started drawing very early as a child, yeah. teenager. Yeah. You were. What was the appeal of drawing to you initially? I came home one day from church and I did a drawing of a crucifixion when I was about three and a half. My mother said, boy, you have a really morbid sensibility. Um, it's terrible, this drawing. As a kid, I drew a lot, made a lot of sketches, a lot of drawings, a lot of finished drawings, and a lot of just ideas, worked out ideas on the page. As I got to be older, when I was about, let's call it 14, I got into reading about Picasso and it was fascinating because I'd seen that some of the drawings seemed unfinished and that puzzled me. For me in a strange way drawing always seemed to be the most important thing that an artist should do or could do, almost more important than the final paintings. Once you know how to draw you're able to paint but if you don't know how to draw you can't really paint mm. so it seemed like that was more important to me so I spent a lot of my life making drawings. Oh, oh, this is this is a great drawing. So this is more sort of cubistic or Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> so would that be related to a painting or is this just a drawing on its own? What's complicated in the painting that you can do in the drawings is that you can just add like these lines and colors and things. They're like construction sites of a human. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like more than they are sort of deconstructed people, like which is sort of a real Picasso type thing. I mean, these are more reconstructions than they are deconstructions in a strange way. When you made those drawings, which are the earliest ones yeah. among the group of drawings that have come to the Morgan recently, you were a teenager. Yeah, mm. 17. One of them is in red uh, colored pencil. Yeah. Were you trying to imitate red chalk of old master drawings? Yeah. It was very much about the idea of like leaning towards the idea of how do you construct a reality. But you know, 10 years later, and I thought, what I should do is just draw like lines freely without any interruption. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to sit there and second guess myself at all as a draftsman or a painter. Uh, whatever it is that comes out is going to be the absolute truth and sincere expression of what it is that I want to do. But I want to make sure that it's, you know, the practice over the years and the sort of honing it. But I honestly don't think I got any better. That's the irony. I don't think I got any better as an artist than I was back then. You mean today? Yeah. Between today and 40 years ago? Or? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think I got any better today than I was when I was 15 or 17. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I think I just changed the subject matter. I'm looking at, you know, multiple dimensions of the personality in a single drawing at times, like in this one, mm -hmm. for example. Um, yeah. Here I'm just looking at the person hiding inside of these many different thoughts and trying to find a way to bring all of those thoughts to life and, and see them all at the same time. How much is improvisation when you make a drawing and how much is sort of pre-planned? It's all improvisation and it might start from some place that you wouldn't necessarily expect in the drawing. But whereas a page of like this, where I'm working on, you know, one idea, that took numerous drawings just to figure out how to get something interesting. The Morgan Library, it's a, it's a dream for me to have works in this collection because 
it's such a special place where a lot of the, the treasures are seen and to finally get into a collection like this is a really fantastic thing. For me, it's second nature really to make art, to um, sit down and make a drawing and, and really just do what is going through my mind at any given moment, any time. It's the way I'm sort of programmed, I guess, as a, <laughs> as a human. <laughs>